Hello, everybody. Hello, guys. So this has been a long time since we've like even recorded anything on YouTube together. Um, we decided we've been doing this for a long time chatting because me and Brigitte are like on the same wavelength all the time. And yeah. we just have so much to talk about when it's just us. But we decided we'll record something because... Our rambling. Our rambling. Because yes, basically. Like, we start talking about something and then like so many things come up and we're like, oh, we wish we recorded this. So yeah. we don't know what to expect from this. But if you want us, what if you want to hear us talk, mm -hmm. I mean, whoever is on my channel, this is Joseph Moon. Um... And um, if you watch on Jewish channel, I'm Aqua Ken. So we knew each other for feels like um, centuries. <laughs> it really does. Like, that's true. So yeah, let's just. Do you know see. what? Actually, this is just something that came into my mind. Do you remember I told? Remember I told you? Um, how did I forget what I said now? But I had um, a dream about you remember i said that you were stepping in front of me in the astral oh my god that was a very interesting one yeah so i keep having these um dreams that brigitte is the divine feminine kind of in a way and she's um as well i we're not in a relationship <laughs> i'm gay <laughs> but um so brigitte is like so she's not my twin flame or anything but um let's not use that word <laughs> yeah <laughs> but in the dream, I kept seeing you like going in front of me, and it was like, um, what do you call them? Hexa, you know, like in um, honey, the little hexagons. hexagons. Is that correct? Yeah, and you were stepping on them, and every time you would like step into like the void, but you would create one of these hexagons, and you would keep going, and there was like this smoke or something. I can't remember fully, but there was something chasing us, and it was like. I trusted you to create the path. Bizarre. But we've kind of felt that anyway, that like every time I'm going through something here in Ireland, you're going through it, but it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Like we're always in sync. Like mm -hmm. you were like to me when we were arranging to talk, like, Joey, is it okay if you can talk in 40 minutes? And every time I'm like, oh, I was going to just say the same thing. It's so weird how that works. But I think that people have some, I think people have like, like a, a version of their, uh, what would you call it? Higher self. Yeah. Kind of through your friends and different people in your family. And stuff. People. Yeah. Cause like, I feel like I really do feel like we're like merged, like proper mm -hmm. merged of each other. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say that because I like I still find it so interesting because it's kind of freaky how much we yeah. reflect. For it, sure. And here. you know what's interesting? I don't think when you were telling me the story last time, uh, you you didn't know so. Um, you mentioned like steps. And um, what's interesting because I'm, I have a very strong connection to bees. And at one point, I don't know if you remember, I said I wanted to get a tattoo where I would have those hexagons, you know, kind of like blending and kind of fading away. Um, and uh, it's it's a very strong connection to me and those hexagons and the bees and, you know, and the honey and all of that stuff that I have personally. And <laughs> wow. you, I don't think you remember that, but you saw it in that, in that, was it meditation or channeling or I don't know what you were doing. It was actually, oh my God, that was freaky. My, sorry, my eyes froze. Um, it was in the astral. I was in a, would you call it a lucid? Yeah, a lucid, you know, when you know you're dreaming? It was in one of those. So I was like, but it felt, I don't know how to explain, but sometimes it feels like I'm in the lower astral. So we were doing some kind of work for the collective. That was something that we were doing. It was like, we were trying to, the, the feeling I had about it all, it was we're trying to lead the darkness astray, kind of. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to like, hey, it's like, you know, in movies when they're like, hey, look at us over here. We're distracting it. Mm -hmm. That's what it was like. That was the whole dream. And we would keep running to different points and it would just, we're trying to make it, we were trying to make this energy wear itself out in some way. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, kind of like buying time. But that's not what it was not what it was because there's no such thing as time in that dream world. But mm. um, it's just very interesting. I didn't know though. I thought you wanted like snake skin. I didn't actually know it was like you wanted it in the shape of a hexagon. I wanted snake snake skin really long time ago, and uh, I wanted a sword, a tattoo at the same I think or similar time when I wanted the um, the um, hexagon tattoo. Um, so it's, it's a, it was a bit mixed up around that time, but um, it was already around the time when when we were living in London together. And when you were talking right now, so we're going to start, you know, literally just talking about a lot of stuff. When you were talking about the mist and the darkness and all of that stuff, literally yesterday, it, I was thinking, I was making a copy and I was like, why are people called light workers? Because I don't feel like I'm a light worker. I feel like I'm a dark worker who is able to find uh, certain answers in the dark. So I'm digging in the dark all the time. And mm -hmm. people who come to me, we're digging in the difficult things, you know? Yeah. And I want to know what's the problem, what is the underlying issue. So I'm digging into issues, which is kind of, you know, set as shadow self um, as darkness. And, uh, you know, and I was like, I, I don't feel like I'm a light worker. <laughs> I'm a dark worker, you know? And that's <laughs> what just rang with me. And when you were talking about that, I'm like, you just saying something that I was thinking about yesterday when you mentioned that darkness, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. But I think we should talk about something that we haven't really touched on in person is the collective messages. Am I froze? No, no, <laughs> I don't think so. No. Um... So what happens? I'm going to start talking about what was happening on my side and then you can talk about your experiences. We'll put it together. Hey, you've thrown this on me. I'm like, oh, whoa, this is going to good. <laughs> Basically, so I think it was the last week or so. I don't know. I'm so lost in time. But it was oh. last week uh, where I've invited my my friend, my mom. Or, well, she's my friend. <laughs> Your mom is the best. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I kept showing her, you know, videos about pyramids saying that the, the tallest pyramid is not actually in Egypt it's in Guatemala I believe correct me if I'm wrong mm -hmm. um, because I was watching yes theories videos on that you know and all of that stuff and other pyramid stuff would come up you know and um, then I somehow this is a very different type of video to watch I somehow find found this, this guy who is a beatboxer and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys will probably know him because he's kind of famous, but I never discovered him until now. He's called MB14. And I played, kind of watched his, you know, performance. He was on The Voice French, French Voice. And I was mind blown by his abilities and his talent. And the thing is, I went on Spotify, I found him. And the only song that I have liked without even listening was called permit because that was very in sync with me at that time and i was like i'm not gonna play this song just yet i need the right time for it without knowing why that was uh, oh my jbl was was charging so i wanted like a proper sound of like a laptop or phone sound for that and i played it in the bathroom while showering because you know the best acoustics is there and i just blast it mm -hmm. when i listen to the music i need to listen to every sound and that song, literally, I had to switch off the shower and I had to listen to it, really listen to it, because it blew my mind. It's not about um, only the sound itself. I'm going to go online very quickly and read a bit of the lyrics, though, if you don't mind. When you played it, it I don't, like, I am not really even into that kind of music. It's not even that. Okay. Normally, I'm not really interested in that kind of music. Yeah. But for some reason, it was like you it's it's not about the language when it's like something so much more. to. There's so much more to it. It was like I was having a, a download as I was listening to it. And mm -hmm. when you played it and when you sent it to me, my eyes as well were starting to water. And I told you about that, that when I am, um, I forget how you explained it. But for me, it's like when I'm down, when I get a download through a song or something or I remember something. It's just, I start to cry and it's... Yeah, but it's a a, there is no emotion behind it. Your eyes start just watering because it's... You know how I like to translate it? This might be my truth though. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to vibe with you. 
once you get something very intense, almost like a strong confirmation, it comes out like that. It's like I your higher self is telling you, yes, 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 exactly yeah. that. You know? I like to say, because like your tears are like salt, and I say I like to call it like sacred, sacred salvation. <laughs> because it's or, yeah. or sorry sacred secretion because it feels like divine yeah. when it happens it's so yeah yeah okay. sure so he starts his uh, verse with he goes have you ever felt like you weren't born at the right time that you already been through all of this in the past life why do i feel so connected to the ancients why do i always want to go back to the essence and then I was like already in another planet when he said that. <laughs> because too. I played video games, now I want to play chess. Trees only grow over time. That is patience. Got my paychecks, but no answers. Now the question is, what's beyond my senses? And I'm going to skip a bit. He goes, but I'm curious about what's coming after my last breath. Pyramids, temples, statues, and candles. Apparently you cannot always find truth in samples. Animals, please check up on your on my genes. My DNA is like a time traveling machine. Pictures along my sleeves, preachers and disbelievers, creatures among my dreams, figures on of my unrealness. And the chorus goes: In my veins, there is more than Arabic blood. In the past, I even saw the pyramid growing. What about the ancients and their wisdom? I guess I have the time traveling syndrome in my veins. And then he keeps repeating that. And, you know, I'm just going to continue the story a bit because then I, the next day or a couple of days later, um, I was like, oh, Joey uploaded the video. Let me check him out. And I played it on my TV and I'm just doing something when I'm listening to you because I like to listen to the, your intros. Um, I love those the best, honestly, because you touch on the collective energy. And then you start talking about pyramids and I just stop that video. I send you that song. <laughs> And then I'm going to play a bit of how Joey reacted to that song because I just knew I didn't need to even tell you much, but it was just a very nice and very honest type of reaction of what's going on. I don't even know what to say anymore about what's going on every fucking week. I'm like... (laughs) Oh my God, Brigitte. I'm crying crying but not do you ever get that when you cry but you're not emotional it's like you can oh, i don't know how to explain i'm not sad or anything but sometimes tears uh, i'm crying but i'm not crying and then because that was so fucking that was so fucking deep and then you just couldn't like come back to life after that uh and i was like yes like he feels exactly what i feel about this song and it's just another dimension because my mom also, you know, she she had an evening with me. We had some wine. We talked about pyramids and how this is another, you know, we talked about aliens and all of that stuff, you know, how people could have done certain things and what they couldn't have done. Um, and um, she kept talking about those pyramids. And I would see, you know, signs of pyramids everywhere. And be, but it was just, it's not about, you know, what you wish for seeing. You see that. It happened very organically because sometimes when you, subconsciously kind of keep looking for something you know or mm. when you're clinging on to something you're going to see it everywhere but that was very organic and very natural and it wasn't only for me it was for my surroundings too you my mom my friend i went to her she also said oh i don't know why and she started talking about e- egypt and pyramids and i'm like oh here we go again you know mm. <laughs> so tell me with you what was happening with you well so uh this is like so what i've been doing recently i haven't really been sharing much but i've been going deep with myself and different just learning more about my own abilities to whatever i'm tapping into um and janie actually i spoke to you about janie and the healing Mm -hmm. that i'm kind of was doing um and this has just helped me open up a lot more um and she's gonna be i'm gonna have her on the channel actually to talk more i think it's next week i'm gonna record maybe with something with her but i every night i kind of like to just pick up whatever wants to come through and sometimes nothing comes through um but for some reason it's a lot kind of just happens on one day and it's overwhelming um and on that actual day 
I'm not going to go too much into it because again, we spoke about not saying certain trigger words, but um, because <laughs> YouTube bastards, keep okay, fucking YouTube <laughs> bastards, ba- YouTube, you're a bastard. <laughs> like the library all together. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but um, so the vision kind of came to me, and it was like, it was like we weren't on this planet. Well, me, not we, because I was um just a ball of light observing basically and I was just kind of floating and and moving around and the the pyramid that I was kind of went up to I could see the reflection of my light when I was looking at it Mm -hmm. so I and then I kind of came back again I was like because it was the it was kind of a weird hazy feeling to the dimension that I was in basically so I knew then I was like okay I'm not actually on earth I thought I was in Egypt and then when I came back it was like the pyramid was it looked like Egypt the, the layout looked the same as in the way that they're laid out yeah. um but they were crystals they were just crystal pyramids and I was like oh and all of a sudden there was a certain person and I spoke about that in the intro kind of and I said this person might be working with interdimensional beings and stuff like this and I you can link that down below for people yeah people I will m- link it down below for you guys yeah. um so DT is the initials of this person basically I felt that this person um he's very well known is somehow working with this um that was basically what my intro was about but for some reason it felt like all of a sudden, these ancient beings, higher versions of us as well, have awakened. And mm-hmm. they've come out of these, oh, I have shivers. Oh, I'm feeling that light. Like, no, it was like the light kind of was coming straight out through the pyramid. And you know the way we love the organite. Everyone talks about those organite crystals and stuff. And it just felt like there was something so sacred about it. And it was like, they're they're here and that it was that there has blown me away since because I've been feeling more and more like it's it's so much there's so much more to come with this Mm -hmm. and people have no fucking idea like this things are going to get very like people are going to be a little bit dissociated with it um because it's not something that we've we've had so much hidden from us that Mm -hmm is sacred and it's special and it's we know deep down in our soul so for some people it's not going to be that hard when it does happen because you're just going to know that it's truth Mm -hmm. but for some people it's kind of bizarre like to believe that aliens are real and that dimensions are real and that you create your reality and that is the full truth you when you're in your when you're in the present moment and you're living in the present moment, that's when, and I want to talk about this actually in a minute about manifestations because mm-hmm. people have a wrong idea about this. When you're in the present, in the now moment, that is when you're connected to God. And that's when God is everything. And that for me is what we're moving into. We're moving into the present moment. And that's why the whole the whole um, disease, <laughs> they like to call it a disease, the whole disease has basically brought us into the present moment so it's a blessing in disguise yeah and isn't it so funny that anyone that talks about that like last year they feel like it went so quick but they also feel like it was so so slow like it felt like 10 years or something it's because that's the timelines kind of kind of coming all together as one and that's why time feels weird for people as well Mm -hmm. but um I honestly think our lives are just beginning like do you not feel that yeah it's like we stepping into completely different type of i don't, I don't want to call it life because it's dimension it's a it is dimension. though it really is a dimension do like, you remember do i just want to interrupt very quickly i don't know if i spoke to you a month ago or so about that because we haven't talked for a while um do you remember how you already told me then? See, when I read people, I remember nothing, just glimpses. So, just, just those. I don't know. But for you, what I remember, um, we talked about pyramids way before that. 
And remember the card that I pulled for you? I'm going to go and get that card, actually. Don't I vaguely it. remember. Go get it. I'll remember when you show me it. Yeah. So talk to them about something. I'll be back. Oh, my um, God. And this is, this is just something that I wanted to kind of clarify for people because I don't want to spend too much time on this topic because it's so weird. <laughs> She's gone. But anyway. Um, so a lot of people are kind of worried about where we're going and people are worried about their career. They're worried about their love life, everything. All of the things that matter in the 3D reality are starting to now fall apart and we're having to really find ourselves in here. Um, and some of us have worked most on that last year and now we're, we're ready for change. But there's a lot more of us that are just this new kind of energy and this we're we're all kind of coming now together as one and we're all being kind of forced even more so to face our face our fears and face ourselves um and with manifestation it honestly feels like because in the old world because i'm going to call it that now the old world was the 3d dimension and in that dimension you manifested through the ego is what I feel. You manifest easily because it was all about the materialistic world. And a lot of us who are light workers, <laughs> we found it kind of hard to make money and um, be successful and find a nice relationship and all this stuff because we were, were not made for that. We were here for right now. And this is where we get the rewards of like, natural abundance because that's what i feel like we're moving into it's natural abundance because getting a nice car and a fancy house and, a, and being a celebrity that's not natural abundance that is inorganic and that is why people need to change what it means to manifest truly from the heart because i don't have to manifest i don't even think about manifesting anymore because everything just falls into place with me because I'm living it. Do you know, you know what I mean? why? Because, you know, when people um, want to, um, let's say someone says, hey, Joey, you know, how, how can I be uh, um, the CEO of this company or how can I be well-known? Um, what is the underlying wish? What is going to give you? What, mm -hmm. what is going to feed your soul by being there? So this is very, very ego-based. I'm not saying that, uh, we shouldn't be chasing for stability, money. Go and get it, you know? Open your arms very freely. Don't sabotage yourself, you know? Even if you want to be famous, for people, if you like, you know, if, you, if you've if you noticed, I don't know, let's take an example of Vikings, right? Um, and the main guy, the main character, Ragnar. Um, he, how he got the role um, in that TV series, he was super chill the way he recorded his uh, audition. He was just like, I just need money for a farm because I want to have a farm in Australia. I'm a farm boy. I'm, you know, connected to the earth and stuff like that. And he got the role because he was coming from hard. He wasn't being anyone that he's not. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got the main one. And interestingly enough, um, that showed in the script too, where at mm -hmm. one point he didn't want to be the, you know, the king of the kings and he just wanted to live peacefully. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, where is the peace and what you wish for? Mm -hmm. what is gonna feed you you know yeah and it's that there's so like that there's so true though there is no right or wrong in what you man want to manifest like if yeah. you do want to manifest some money but it's because there's some other like it's just it's this is it again want it has to be from it has to not be want it has to just be known you have to yeah. know it. yeah you know if you're um, not, because like for example, there are people then that are part of breaking this whole reality, and there's still parts of it that have to change. Like with 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 stuff that's happening in the world, like we're we're still figuring everything out. So, um, I think sometimes it's confusing. Like there's no rules to this, but I just want people to know that. When you ask someone why your manifestations aren't coming true, I can't tell you that. You have to figure that out really on your own because it's something your your beliefs need to change. And that is 
very multi-layered. I feel like that takes a lot of time. You can't just change that overnight. And I think that that is the biggest thing that we have to work through on our own is because that's the magic that has been, been manipulated for so, so, so long. People think that witchcraft is... I knew you'll get there. <laughs> yeah, it's so annoying. People think that because it frustrates the fucking shit out of me. People think that witchcraft is lighting a little candle and salt and all this, whatever, whatever you want, if you want to do that as well, whatever. But like the real witchcraft is like the media and the the way that we are, or some of our music is ne so negative and just there's so much stuff behind everything. But it's what you have to just be aware of what you're consuming because I can watch a horror film and not have it affect me because I'm not giving my power away to it. And it's just, that's what I feel like the real thing is, is that you have to be aware that some stuff, a lot of stuff <laughs> takes our, took, takes us out of the present moment. So if you want to get out of the present moment to just relax, I think that's fine. You need to know how to get your, you need to know how to snap yourself back. Um, because we came here to enjoy life and that means whatever you want to do. You want to get your tits out on camera. That's completely. I literally, I, I wanted, at one point, I wanted to talk even about porn, you know? Some yeah. people enjoy doing porn. Jesus, be the best porn, you know, I don't know, actor, performer um, that you can be. And that mm -hmm. might be your actual life path. Mm -hmm. You know, you I are there actually... to do certain things that you enjoy as long as you enjoy that. Because you know, a lot of people, I'm, I believe, but uh, hey ho. No, but you know what, though, Brigitte, this is exactly this is the stuff that we need to talk about because, again, there is two sides. <laughs> there is two sides to every corn. This is a symbol that triggers a lot of people because they think it's the devil. Okay. Yeah, when, I know. <laughs> when people like need to get over the whole devils and it's like a broken phone game you know yeah. and so many things have been twisted over time that yeah. now it feels like we are here to untwist it yeah you know? like they there's two sides to the coin that's why i brought that up in the symbol on the coin because the meaning of that symbol is been twisted and as well with the porn industry it, there's some sick ass shit that goes yeah. on there and it's very, very, like, not okay. But why not envision a world where sexuality is seen as sacred? And m maybe someone, I, I see this in the future because I see it in some of my clients. <laughs> I don't tell everyone, but I see some, some people are working through the divine feminine energy. And a lot of that has to do with sac sacred sexuality. And it has because, been a lot repressed. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people are having issues with it at the minute, and I, I that's why I want to get to talk to, because a lot of the, um, the people that I'm talking to at the minute are very much, you know, I can refer them to those people, because I don't know, I just know the energy and what I see, but what I'm, what I am seeing is that there is a lot of people that are, because in the timeline that, that I'm on, I do see porn. But I feel like it's going to be something completely different and it won't even be called porn. It'll be called something else like sacred sex or something where it's kind of like, and even Tantra is twisted as well. It's, it's, yeah. it's, there's so much in the mind when it's more now we're moving into the feeling of what we're doing. We're just going to know what's right rather than yeah. trying to think on what to do. Like, Oh, I need to, you know, you need to visualize the energy, <laughs> you know, the whole Tantra stuff. Like I don't, I don't fully understand that. I think that that's sacred in its own way, but it's still, there's distorted. Everything feels like it's a little bit distorted because it's been going on for so fucking long. This old yeah, magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, um, of course. Of course it is. I brought the cards. Um, so we can't, we oh, yeah, for, I forgot cards. about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I didn't even think maybe I should just leave it behind. But anyway, coming back to the uh, pyramid. No, um, you know, I just now remembered what that card, what the meaning of that card is. Um, and I believe you might have had both of them come out because I took two cards. Yeah, I think you had both of them. <laughs> so the pyramid showed up in your reading like that. 
Oh my god. Can you that? Oh no. my god. It's, in stone. it's not in stone, Joey. You just forgot about it. Fuck. And that's humanity waiting for it to crash. So this is a devil energy. This is a devil card. That's something that's been, you know, held um, away from us in a way. Now they the power keep... is crashing all of it down and we can access or we can rebuild in a way. And the, look at the, above that is Aquarius. Yeah. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. <laughs> so here we go. The tree of life is behind that. Yeah. And that is, oh. And how we, and remember now exactly how we saw the, this first pyramid, you know, how the, it, it showed up. Because I referred Brigitte. to a tree and you said, I, I saw a tree in my vision and then I showed you this card and then we started talking about pyramids and then it kept on going. So that's why we want to record our conversations because we go like, what the fuck all the time. You know? We do this all the time. We're always like, what the fuck? <laughs> but that there is crazy because... Can I see that again? Mm-hmm. Because if you know what I was talking about, the, the stuff that I don't want it, to say. It connects to the story. we demolishing the devil energy. Wait, it has but to be. That's devil. like the military, and that mm-hmm. is kind of how I've seen it. And is that a female on the horse, or am I just tripping? Um, It's a guy with horns. Oh, uh, okay. It's like it's a, a master of some sort. You yeah. can't see it because it's not going to focus that well. Um, but this this is just amazing because, and look at the star as well. Look, that card is connected to like the 21st of December kind of shit as well. This is like basically the, new hope after a shitty period that we what have. What deck to, is that? That's so fucking deep. In, yeah, I know. <laughs> in between tarot. You know, in funny between, story, it's like, because we're not even in the age of Aquarius yeah. yet. We're in between. in between. Oh, wow. <laughs> so funny fact about this deck. Um, a, thank you very much, guys, who are supporting me. But um, one person reached out to me saying, hey, um, I want to get you a Santa Muerte deck. And I had a feeling, and I trust all my feelings, that I should go for a different deck. I said, I'm so sorry. Do you mind if I choose another one? Mm-hmm. I didn't know about that, but a person has already sent me a Santa Marta deck. Um, so it was just like, so we don't double it. And I came across this uh, in-between tarot that I found really interesting because every suit, maybe you'll want to get this. I think you channel. I think I do know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to take a couple of cards from the same suit. Maybe someone else will want to get it. Um, I don't know. If you would take the, let's see. The, the cups suit basically say you have the one suit you have a story of a character in one one suit you're going to have one character going through things in the cup suit there's going to be someone else so in the one suit there's a, a journey of this person right uh, of this girl basically and there's a whole story in that you know in one suit of that person mm-hmm. now when you get to coins there is a story of someone else you know who's going through stuff mm-hmm. i mean it's just by character every suit is a new character that's like, going that's like this deck. I don't know. I would love to just get it. I forget what this tarot was called. Lost Forest. I think that's what it's called. It was on um it was on Kickstarter, but the quality is not great. Let's just say that. Because I'm I mean, here too. Here too. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It's like the of- card stock on this one, if you want to get it. I'm just I don't know, maybe there's a new version, but um I thought it was gonna feel but it's not as good as I thought it would be. But the artwork is fucking amazing. And it like the it's the same thing. It's like they all line up and make a picture. But it's like Oh, can you show me one from close up? I wanna see what's the vibe of the uh of the Let deck. me just get two. So there's the seven of what six Yeah, well those two kind of come together, but like there's not really much going on there. So like this is the six of earth. It's a very different deck, but like they it connects and then what's happening over here there's a fox okay and the little fox is getting lost and then there's more happening so when you put it out like this the yeah. whole you, you see the whole forest and at the end of the forest there's um i think it's the nine of pentacles nine of earth there's a little white fox and it's like oh it's so nice she's like a little like uh, it, this is, it is a really nice deck but again it's not probably for someone who's new to tarot because it's very different yeah. 
Mm. But um, yeah. Cool. I like that a lot. Um, Is there anything else that we wanted to chat about? Because I mean, how long have we been going? <laughs> I, feel, I have no idea. I feel like this is a good little like start to. Yeah, we don't want to drag it. It's gonna get boring for you. Yeah. Um, um, but if you like us just recording our chats, guys, like um, our catch ups whenever we have time, let us know. We can record it next. We time have we to. Can... We have to do. The, we have to do the blindfolded thing someday. <laughs> where, yeah. where, do you, where do you see this? Look what I got because I've been doing it with myself. <laughs> Hold on. I've been doing it with myself. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so, that sounds so I've wrong. I've been playing with myself. <laughs> so I've been, I have been, I have been really enjoying bondage. <laughs> Remember when I used to talk with a Russian accent when I was drunk in London? That was hilarious. <laughs> Just remembering oh, oh my people's, god people's faces those who don't know you because know. like I'm, I'm just gonna talk about it a bit um so i introduced joey to my friend group and we all are a little bit not normal so that's why i love them it's a sense of the sense of humor it's uh, way too much for some people but joey incorporated now a group so well that you know we talked with guys on um on Skype, um, no, on Facebook, I think a month ago, we did a catch up because now I moved, you know, from London. And Mario goes, Brigitte, if we're traveling anywhere, make sure Joey's there. <laughs> like, Joey <laughs> will know about that. <laughs> because it was so sweet when we were um, skating. You remember, I skate, roller skating on my 30th mm. birthday. And I fell. I felt I saw Mario like that's how caring those guys are he was always kind of beside you but not trying to intervene you in a way in case you you trip because I love Joey for that because he lets his inner child just go you know he doesn't care he just goes and that's why I think your energy is so it's so beautiful in the way because people feel so relaxed around you because you just live your life in a moment you know yeah well like you guys were really good at <laughs> you guys were really good at it. You just were like doing all these fancy twirls and stuff. I'm just like <laughs> I was in a dress, Joey. I couldn't do shit. Oh yeah, you actually couldn't because your dress kept going up. But I fell about 20 times. I know I just kept getting back up and I was like, I'm gonna go again you and again. Smile. That's yeah, and I was like yeah, shitting myself. And then I would look and then Mario would be like my dad or something on the yeah. side of me. And I was like, okay, I'm safe. He's there. But that was a that wasn't that that was your 30th, wasn't it? Yeah. That was such a good night. Yeah. Oh. But um, yeah, this is I have a blindfold. Oh my god. And it like so I haven't actually been using it as I'm I'm lying. I haven't been using it. I haven't had time to use you it. You didn't play with yourself. I haven't been playing as much as I would like to, you know. Okay. So if someone is new to this, because some people might not know what oh, we God, used yeah. to do ages ago, we would basically blindfold each other um and <laughs> play games. <laughs> but <laughs> <You're> going <laughs> Even I was trying to reverse Joey to straight guy. <laughs> Basically, I'm joking. <laughs> oh my god, this is another triggering topic because I watched something on. Oh my god, another bullshit. Where there was some kind of counseling for gay people to turn straight, and parents would take their young kids to to turn them straight, but that was somehow connected to the church. And obviously, there are a lot of stuff went down. But anyway, for the next time, maybe. we um, actually should talk about that because me and you've talked about this before. And you know, my pers- like, I am in the LGBT community, and I am very opposite to what a lot of people think and believe because I see it from a different, a uh, completely different lens, and not many people would see it from my side. Um, oh, I think a lot of people say from your side. I think a lot of people on my people channel definitely need to do, but people are scared to speak up. I think. Yeah, but I'm just like this is bull. Like it's it's just a lot of bullshit, and it's actually embarrassing for me in some ways because it's not fair that even people have to. Because like it's like society is making people look like a joke, and this is in all areas. This is not just in the LGBT community. It's in you know, sexism, racism, feminism. It's just your people are being 
played and abused and making them we're we're confusing people and making them feel like they have power mm -hmm. and they're like at the top they're laughing but that's all going to change so that's an that's a good thing but it's just it's really frustrating from my perspective and where i am and looking at it and i'm like this and you like it's so annoying but um that is another topic because it's a very passionate yeah i think this is gonna be a very broad topic because what you you just scratch the surface because yeah. i know exactly what annoys you but i think people yeah. could interpret it taken from what you're talking about in so many other ways so we might yeah. talk about it next time yeah. i'm just gonna be listening because i have um no word in it because i'm straight but because i i kind of hung around gay people since six years 16 years old because i had a very close friend who was gay is still and but then this I'm is the you, thing Brigitte. i know how you how you go about things and i'm very close to you both well not anymore with all this but you i mean you have a healthy approach to this and i think it should be shared because a lot of people in my surroundings too um they see the same way like you and i think a lot mm -hmm. of other people too anyway I, so i this is the thing though i just want to say is that people are getting offended about i'm sorry people just get so fucking offended about everything and this needs to fucking stop like it's so annoying like yeah. seriously this frustrates me because since i was a child i never understood the behavior of people like i don't understand why my sexuality was a big deal that's why i came out so early i was like like everybody cop on like what it, what's the big deal and then it was the same with veganism too like i wanted to be vegan but i was doing it for myself just because because i just didn't really resonate with eating meat it just never really settled with me but then i went to london and all these vegans were attacking me for stuff like i didn't even realize i used to smoke yeah. i used to smoke and someone was like that's not vegan and it's got beaver's butt in yeah, it or something just doing your own thing you're minding your own business and there yeah. are people who are preaching yeah and this is this is what needs to stop we need to just accept where everyone is at and like it's so much higher than you know blaming bra blaming belinda down the road because she has a belief that you don't like who it's cares about it? shaming and and it's 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 very ego based now because yeah. i'm better than you because i'm not doing this and that and that because you have to be like this where mm. you have you're not even comparing yourself to anyone you're just living your life i'm just yeah. gonna share a bit of a story when we lived in london um so basically i was really close with um joey's then you were already partners in that time yeah yeah before um, i met yeah. you joey's ex was basically my friend since i was 15 i believe so i knew him for a really long time and he called me and he said hey do you want to move in together blah, 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 blah. and then we saw each other a couple of times before and then we uh, moved in together so i didn't really know you Mm -hmm. uh, but I knew that you were, you know, I knew a bit about you. And then we were, when we were cooking, then I realized that you were vegan, you know, but you are not vegan straight cut. You know, you were just vegan for yourself. Mm -hmm. Whenever you feel like you don't want to eat something, you don't eat it. And then one evening, I remember I was coming back home. I was super drained. Um, and I was just like, oh my God, I don't know what to cook. I don't know what to get, you know, something quick, chicken wings <laughs> or pizza, you know, whatever. Oh my God, <laughs> chicken wings. I remember you eating that all the time. <laughs> I loved it in London. I miss it here so much. And then I get a message from Joey saying, don't um, buy anything for dinner because I cook dinner for you and all this. And I'm like, what? And I came back home. Oh, I remember that. And that's what you know opened my eyes to because i you know i would see people preaching shit you know about veganism that you have to be certain way only otherwise you're not in our group you know those uh, like those um uh, kids in school you're not you're not cool enough for us mm -hmm. so that's mm -hmm. what kind of situation this is and joey cooked oh my god an amazing stew that was meat-based you use that thing um was it, it I used like minced meat, kind of. Yeah, minced beef and with peas and there was mashed potato, I think, and some veggies on the side. He didn't obviously taste any of it. 
but I was eating it. I was like, you don't even know, like people who can cook cannot cook like you. And for <laughs> you what was important for me, for you to take that extra mile, because, you know, I was kind of, you know, a bit careful with vegans, um, because I lived with someone who was like that. We, mm -hmm. like, she was making sure that her pan is not touched by, you know, tiny bit of meat that was sacred in a way. And so that's what I knew, you know, and all the media stuff. And then you cook this amazing meal um, that was consisting of meat. And I was like, oh my God, that's what open-mindedness is like. That's what no ego is like. You know, that's what... Um, you made me realize something. Like, I didn't... Because I wasn't even thinking about that. But now looking back at it, I'm like, I am quite... I'm very open-minded. <laughs> like... Yeah. I mean, you are super open-minded, but also very... I don't know even if I can find words for it, but you know exactly what's right. And that's coming straight from your higher self, you know? Yeah. I remember, um, remember when I was leaving London and we cried. Oh my God, cried we cried so life. much. And I'm not the person who cries. Neither am I. trying to teach me how to cry. You know, after work, I would get home pissed and Joe was like, let it out. I'm like, oh fuck this bullshit you know and then i would get wine and i'm fine but i remember you're sitting on the couch and i was like brigitte to just cry and you and I was were like why did you see me trying i was like okay and then i'm like so i'm like not supportive at all i'm like good now you do feel better i was yeah. like good i love 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 oh, so God. yeah I, cr I cried my eyes i remember and then i sent you a song when you were in the airport uh, hold on to happiness maybe someone wants to listen to it it was super super cool again i came across it very i don't know i don't look music up usually but it just came on somewhere mm -hmm. and the word said you know hold on to happiness and i knew that that song was for you at that time because we were going through changes um and in one part of the song it said we would drink uh, cheap red wine and have conversations and, da -da -da, and it was just basically summing up what we would do you know we just mm -hmm. talk a lot and dive into things and just have some wine and it was just sacred you know type that's of how we learned that's how we learned tarot was we, we had fun with it yeah that, that is when people ask me about tarot it's like find someone who who wants to learn with you and practice that because how quick did we learn yeah we got it we got it like instantly but like, we were kind of like busting our asses off because i remember i would come back home i wouldn't even want to eat i would just drop my bags i'd see you and i would get my tarot and yeah. sometimes i'd have to force myself to do other things because i was like we need to get to the bottom of this mm. and we would just basically ask each other questions you know about people we didn't know mm -hmm. so joey would think of a person not even sometimes tell me you know or I wouldn't tell him the name of a person I'm thinking of someone tell me about them but this wouldn't be predictive that would be factual information so it's all about practice it's all about practice. that's the best way to do it actually is the guess who yeah the guess who game with tarot is so good because you you start to trust because that's all it is it's all it is is trusting yourself so if you can describe a person and someone that you don't know or whatever, that's you get you start to trust yourself, and that's how you tap into this. Like I don't even have to question my intuition anymore because I just know yeah. that it's it's correct because I've had too many coincidences, and that's mm -hmm. all through our practice of like trying, and that's like this as well. Remember when we did that for? Remember that we were like so we started clarifying what this is for people, and we went on the rant again. And we're coming back to what it is. <laughs> Let's finish with this because this is what we'll do yeah. maybe another time. So you will you explain it because I'm not very good at explaining that. So we basically blindfold. Either I would blindfold Joey or he would blindfold me. And I would just <laughs> start. <laughs> and I just basically sit in the background um, and Joey would be on the screen like that. And he would um, shuffle the deck and pull one card out, which I can't see. <laughs> what are you doing that for? What did I do? And like he's shuffling. The oh deck. my god! So my face is red. Shuffle, shuffle the deck. <laughs> Why is the Russian coming out? Okay. Baba Yaga. <laughs> Baba Yaga. And um, I would just basically have to tell him what I see, but it's not about you know describing the card exactly because how people think it has to go that they have to see the exact image right in front of them. 
straight away you might start sensing that you feel maybe dark color somewhere, a shadow somewhere in that corner. You'd start going by, you know, the outline kind of a card and then saying what you feel. Is there a light source? Is there a person? So we basically started doing that and that was a lot of fun. Now I'd be scared to do that after so long because, you know, it's, it requires quite a lot from you. This is quite a difficult mm -hmm. exercise. But yeah, let's do it sometime because it's been a really long time. We should actually do a practice run someday because I, I haven't done it with, I haven't done it with anyone really. And I, <laughs> I but I do want to say, I, I do want to say this, that I feel like you need to have a strong connection with the person you're doing it with because I've tried to do it with my mom or, and I've tried to do it with other people. And I, th I think that what it is, if they don't believe in your gifts... Yeah, that's what I want to say, because I don't believe it's like it's someone who has to be in tune as much. I think if someone doubts that this is going to work out, you kind of F off your energy in a way, and you almost like literally blindfolded, you know? Yeah. It's really actually... be for people who are not believers, or yeah. who are here to test you out. That's you know? the same thing. Yeah, actually, that's so true. I've, ha I've had that with... Um... I've had that with one person before on camera and it was so awkward they because I was next you? No, they were just um, in victim kind of like, oh, my life is shit and all this kind of stuff. And just like everything was just like... It was a no, like a child. Yeah, and I was just like... And anyway, I couldn't even get anything from them because I I felt so much like, like real deep, deep. Like they needed more than tarot. They needed a full on like... I don't know, shamanic kind of fucking, oh, <laughs> like, I don't know, because it was, I hope that person's not, no, they don't know who they are. I know they won't know who they are. Um, well, I mean, it seems like there there's like lack of um, taking responsibility for their life. That's what it seems like, you know? And then that's when that victim mentality appears, when you think everything is out to get you and everyone where you just not, doing things that you're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. but you see that's the thing i was that i was that person too like i was there was a point in my life where i was like everyone's out to get me everyone hates me da, 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 da. i was as well but it's so hard to see that though i think it takes i don't know i don't even know how i got out of that because what that is that's the darker energy really trying to destroy the shit out of you and no one can really, you have to save yourself. But that's with everything. No one's coming to save anyone. We all have to save ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's the truth. But some people are just even deeper in that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's hard to see people in that, but you can't take, you, you have to be compassionate, but you cannot really get involved yeah. in helping them more. Because the more you try and help them, the worse you get. Because you are feeding the parasites that want your attention mm -hmm. it's not about healing it's about sucking from the people who are caring true compassion is about being like i can't help you i'm sorry that's mm -hmm. my opinion mm -hmm. but i don't i don't really attract anyone like that anymore because i've set those boundaries and I, you're the same when mm -hmm. you set those boundaries we learn through our work the same we've learned the same things and it's like, you know, we had we had these issues with charging more money. But like if we didn't charge more money, we were we were like drained with all the work. And we had all those yeah. like abundance blockages like we both yeah. worked through so much abundance blockages. Like, but remember when we were like, can you imagine like when we have that many readings and we were like, yeah, so we we're talking. Can you imagine yeah, like you had like five people booking with you a month? Um, yeah. But it's just because we were so like not wanting to kind of charge people the price that other people were charging. We were doing it for free for a good a good yeah, while yeah. as well. Yeah, I think that's a necessary part for anyone who's trying to also practice. And I think in a way you kind of give back. But when doing free readings, I would I would give you guys an advice if you just start in. Do not give free readings to people who are nagging you or who are in desperate mode because they're not here to learn or to help themselves. They're here just for you to fix them. And yeah. you're not going to fix them and you're not going to fix themselves, okay? So just how it goes. You ha they have to live through that. 
Mm -hmm. And there, Mm -hmm. and there are people, and this is just the truth. There are readers that are there for those people. (laughs) There is like, there's people that are just kind of like doing, they're, they're all, this is the thing. There's so many layers to different tarot readers as well. We're all different. And some people like I might not be as good as some other reader because maybe I'm not seeing something about myself. Mm-hmm. But once yeah, you break through it, you're like, Oh yeah. yeah the experiences. Yeah. Um, so never judge yourself where you're at or because at the end of the day, we're all, we're all in this together and we should just enjoy life as much. Sure. We've been there, been places, done things, you know, if, even if we've not, it's not, this lifetime and the past ones so <laughs> if you don't like this life just tap out and go into your past <laughs> life for a wee while and you know like have you ever done that where you've just kind of zoned out and went into a completely different reality do that all the time and it's not oh very my God. Good. don't start i'm gonna start another story about yeah we need to stop okay okay, okay so bye <laughs> <laughs> so bye um let us know, comment down below if you want um, us to do more. And if you have anything that we you want to talk about or want us to talk about, because we could talk for hours. <laughs> and yeah, we literally, true. we do talk for hours. <laughs> we talk for at least, like, when we talk, we talk from, I'd say, four to six hours. We're, we did for one time, I think it was nearly eight hours. So Yeah, not normal, for sure. But we used to do that when we lived together, so it makes sense. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> enough, yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. So bye, bye guys. everybody Thanks for listening. Bye. Um